All right, my friends, so we got a lot of discussion about inverted yield curves and recessions and stock returns and the whole thing. And uh, I find it silly, to be honest with you, because, again, a inverted yield curve supposedly indicates a recession is coming on. When is the recession? Do you know? Are you in it right now? Well, we, we have no clue because all the indicators are lagging in terms of what we've had for the previous uh, quarter. So we know for a fact we are not in a recession right now. We know that for a fact. How do we know that? Because last quarter, the GDP went up. A recession has to be two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. Well, uh, since last quarter was not a negative, we know that today we are not in a recession because we don't know what this quarter's GDP is going to be. Now, maybe this quarter and next quarter could say, yes, in hindsight, we were in a recession. But as we sit here today, are we in a recession? The answer is no. We might be looking back and I'd say, say we were in a recession, but we don't know that right now. We have no clue. We have no clue. We can look at the leading indicators and say we might be going into one, but no one has any idea. So the whole thing is silly, but man, I can't tell you how many people say, well, how should I invest during a recession? So essentially what they're doing is they're saying an inverted yield curve, how should I invest? Because recession is here, if not imminent. And that's the issue that comes to mind. So let's read. What uh, Eugene Fama and Kenneth French. Now, you may or may not know these guys, but these are some of the most uh, smartest guys and uh, analysts. They founded DFA, Dimensional Fund Advisors, uh, some of the biggest fish in the uh, pond, so to speak. And I'm, I'm a fan of uh, both these guys. But, oops. I'm a fan of both these guys uh, simply because I read a book. They had a book on the three factor. What was that book? In 1994, is on small cap value stocks. I had read a book on from that my economics professor had given me. And I, ever since, I've been a big fan of these guys. So now, unfortunately, a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Advisors, quote unquote, will use their research or DFA to say evidence-based investing as if there's any evidence whatsoever about uh, market returns. There is no evidence, none whatsoever. But we can say, hey, at the end of the day, is there any such thing as a positive correlation between this and that historically? And if there's not, what do you t is that evidence? No, because there could be. But I mean, you use the best you can because everything in the future is a guess. I mean, China could drop a flipping uh, megaton bomb on us right now. How do you prepare for that with your past evidence? You can't. So what you can do is say, well, everyone is worried about a recession because of inverted yield curve. How has that worked out in the past? Is there any reason to be concerned about that? And the answer is, well, I will share it with you. All right. Dateline, July 28, 2019. Yield, yield curves uh, typically slope up with long maturity government bonds providing higher returns than short maturity with government bonds. Most empirical evidence says the slope of the yield curve predicts economic activity. Inverted yield curves with higher yields in the short-term bonds tend to forecast future recessions. Now, notice he said they say tend. And I say me going like this, my coffee cup, tends to forecast recessions. Me going like this, my phone, tends to forecast recessions. You can say anything forecast recessions because no matter what you do, there is a recession that's going to happen. And you can say, Josh, every time you took a sip from your coffee cup, a recession happened later on down the road. Every time I... Breathe air, a recession happened down the road. You see what I'm saying? Recessions always happen. Thus, you can extrapolate any data from the past and say, this led to that. And I'd say, well, it's me breathing led to recession. And that's why I say, if you eat carrots, you will die. Because if you eat carrots, you will die. Think about it, huh? Perhaps because of this relation, some investors, investors feeling, fearing that an inverted yield curve predicts low stock returns uh, uh, fearing that inverted yield curve predicts low stock returns reduce their equity exposure when the term spread is negative. We test whether the fear of is justified. The answer is no. There is no justification in the past that inverted yield curve or recession, I'm going to say recession here, I don't know if they've said the whole thing, but the, the, the premise is inverted yield curve leads to recession, leads to potential dramatic stock market re returns uh, going south, and the answer is no. We find no evidence that inverted yield curve predicts future stock returns, or we find no evidence that inverted yield curves predict stocks will underperform treasury bills for forecast periods of one, two, three, and five years. The test we use uh, monthly stock government bond data for the uh, U.S. and 11 may other major markets. We started in January of 1975 with six countries to include the U.S., 
The sample grows to 10 countries by 1990, and the last two, Belgium and Italy, are added to 1991. So again, they're using 11 other major markets on top of the good old US of A. In your face, Canada. Uh, the test ends in December 2018. Depending on the data available, we consider up to six term spreads in a country, comparing one month, one year, two year short term yields with five and 10 long term yields. We take the perspective of a U.S. investor. The default or passive strategy delivers a U.S. dollar return on one in, or of three stock portfolios. U.S. stock market, the portfolio of available markets outside the U.S., which we call the World X U.S., or the world portfolio of all available markets. So you got the U.S., you got everything else other than the U.S., and you got the total combined. The active strategy for the U.S. replaces a stock market with a one-month treasury bill when the U.S. term spread is negative. All right, so they're saying what we're going to do is once we have an inverted yield curve, we're going to sell our stocks and go to a uh, one-month treasury bill. The active strategy for the world and world ex-U.S. combine the dollar-denominated return with country-specific strategies that follow the same rules as the U.S. strategy, replacing a country stock market with U.S. treasury bills when its local yield curve is inverted. Again, so essentially they're saying... Once we have an inverted yield curve, we're selling stocks or going into a 30-day uh, T-bill. Our, 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 our goal is to assess whether the expected equity premium, the expected return on stock in excess of the bill return, is negative after inversion. The hypothesis that inverted yield curve spread predicts low stock returns does not specify when low returns occur after an inversion. So we examine periods of one, two, three, and five years. A one-year forecast period implies that we want the shape of the yield curve, inverted or not, to predict returns up to a year ahead. To this end, we construct a portfolio every month that, takes, uh, that makes 12 investments in bills or stocks, depending on the yield curve at the end of each of the 12 months of the preceding year. If the yield curve is inverted at the end of, year, uh, uh, at the end of month one, one-twelfth of the portfolio for month one is invested in bills. If the yield is inverted at the end of month 12, two, another one-twelfth of the portfolio is invested in T-bills, etc. This portfolio's total allocation in month T depend on the number of inversions in the prior 12 months. If seven of the term spreads from T12 to T1 are negative, seven-twelfths of the portfolio in the bills is in bills and five-twelfths is in stocks. So essentially what they're saying is we're going to look at it every single month. So if you got, we got to take uh, let's see, 144,000 bucks because you have this 12,000 each month, 144,000 bucks. In September, we have an inverted yield curve. We're going to take 12,000 of that 144,000, one out of 12, and we're going to put it in, in government bonds, or, or T-bills. If no, October is inverted, we're going to take another 12,000 out of the stock returns and put it in, in T-bills and so on and so on. U ultimately, if we have 12 months, a year of inverted uh, of inverted yield curve, we're going to have 144,000 in T-bills and none in stocks. Hope that makes sense. Uh, let's see. The realized active premium, uh, let's see. Uh, okay. All right, let's keep looking. We estimated active. Okay. Combining countries. All right, so uh, we compare active and passive strategies for three portfolios. Let's just read what they got for a conclusion. I can read the evidence. Okay. Uh, panel A of Table 1 summarizes the T-bill and bond yields we use to measure U.S. term spreads. Consistent with a typical upward sloping yield curve, the average yields for the 588 months of 1975 through 2018 increased mono monotonically from 4.38% per year at one month to 5.0% uh, for one year to 5.81% for five and 6.19%. So basically the average is... A one-month T-bill is paying 4.38, and a 10-year bond is paying 6.19. So 4.3, 5.0, 5.8, 6.19. That is your typical yield curve. It's sloping. Investors seeking to increase their expected portfolio by selling stock and buying treasury bills when the term structure inverts are betting that the equity premium will be negative while they are in bills. Summary statistics for the returns and equity premiums on the three passive portfolios we consider our panel of table, and I'll put a link in the show notes here. Uh, the 1975 to 2018 average annualized difference between the monthly returns on the uh, VW portfolio of U.S. stocks and one-month bills is 8 point. All right, let's just, I don't know what that means. All right, so let's keep going down here. All right, let's just get to the conclusion. I haven't read this article, but I thought I'd share with you because I think it's pretty interesting. All right, summary. We talk about what they're doing. So there's a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts. So let's see what fam of French uh, have found. We test a hypothesis that inverted yield curves predict negative equity, equity premiums. The tests use monthly observations, monthly now, 
with six countries, including the U.S., going back to 1975 through 2018. We consider three broad market portfolios. We already talked about that. And we, then we added a few more countries later on. We find no evidence that yield curve inversions can help investors avoid poor stock returns. Relative to the returns on the three passive stock market portfolios, all 24 active U.S. and world strategies and 19 of 24 of world minus the U.S. strategies reduce the average realized return for 1975 to 2018. The longest forecast period is five years. With a diversification of 11 or 12 countries and 60 months after each inversion, almost all the expected five-year premium for the active world and U.S. and ex-U.S. strategies are reliably negative. The simplest interpretation of the negative active premiums we observe is that the yield curves do not forecast the equity premium. This interpretation applies that investors who try to increase their expected return by shifting from stocks to bills after inversions just sacrifice reliably positive, unconditional expected equity premium. And that's all you need to know right there. The simplest interpretation of the negative active premiums we observe is that the yield curves do not forecast future equity premiums. Thus, the interpretation says, investors who try to increase their rates of return by shifting to stocks to bills after an inversion just sacrifice essentially future returns in the long run. All right, there you go. I'll put a link in the show notes. You should absolutely uh, read this and I'll uh, let me know your comments down below. We will see you. Thanks, guys.